That's all you're doing. It went in your ear and now you're bleh, puking it out, trying to sound like you know what you're talking about. So I'm walking around with plumber's crack 24 seven, unless I got my elastic joggers on. Hey neighbor, I don't want your cookies. Don't want them. What's up? It's the Jubal Show. I'm your host, Jubal Fresh, because that's the way I planned it. That's right. I started a podcast hosted by me. My name is Jubal, and I called it the Jubal Show. So I think it's only appropriate that I be the one hosting the show. Not somebody else. Not another Jubal, even. Unless there's another Jubal out there that wants to host the Jubal Show, and then we could just like have a round robin of Jubals who host the Jubal Show. No. No, I'd have to interview you first to see if you're a Jubal that I find entertaining enough to host the Jubal show. I know there are a few other Jubals out there. By the way, my name sounds kind of funny when you say it over and over again. Jubal, 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 Jubal. I've never really said it that much in a row because not a big third person talker, but Jubal knows this. Jubal's name said repeatedly has a funny ring to it, but I know there are a few other Jubals out there and I've never met them and I would be down to meet them and then interview them. And then they would say, Hey, I feel like I should be able to host the Jubal show. Cause my name is Jubal. And then I would go, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. And then they would sit there and go, um, uh, uh, and then I would go, no. No, you got to be able to ramble a little bit if you want to host the Jubal show. And then I would just continue hosting the show. So anyway, thank you very much for checking it out. Episodes of the Jubal show drop every single Wednesday rate review, rate and review, please. Also make sure you check out the podcast that I do with my hot ass wife, Alex Fresh. That one drops on Mondays. Also rate review that don't be a dick rate review and shout out to whoever keeps putting positive review on well, whoever the people that are putting positive review in the review part on the iTunes. Cause that is just hilarious to me. So keep it up. All I want is for you to put positive review. That's it. Or negative review, but mostly positive review, please. Yeah. Just a small set is causing quite a ruckus, isn't he? I, I like, I was going to talk about something else on the podcast today, but then Twitter and the entire internet went crazy because Justice Molset, by the way, I learned how to say his name because I had to go to the YouTube and look up a tutorial on how to say Jesse because I couldn't figure out was a juicy, whatever. I don't watch the show Empire. Not really very familiar with who he is. But anyway, it's Jesse, not juicy. I think it should be Juicy Smolset because lots of juicy stories about Juicy Smolset. Anyway, Jesse Smolset hate crimed himself. And got the entire country in an uproar. Got the Chicago police involved. Everything. People went crazy. And then you find out that he hate crime himself. Hired a bunch of people to beat him up. So that he could get more money from the show Empire. Well today, apparently, he's been cleared of all charges. Charges dropped for hate crime in himself. By the way, Jesse, I said it before, when it first came out, don't hate crime yourself, love yourself. That is a good message for anybody listening or watching to this podcast, watching to, watching to this podcast. Anybody who's checking out the podcast, wherever you're checking it out, whether it's on YouTube or you're listening to it, learn from Jesse Smolset. Don't hate crime yourself, love yourself. Anyway, he chose to hate crime himself, but now the charges are dropped But the thing that's confusing to me is I've been reading news stories all day long, going crazy, trying to figure this out because he's not innocent. He pled guilty, but he's not innocent. They cleared the charges, but he still hate crimed himself. So he's got great lawyers. Got that Mark Garagos dude who is like he can get anybody off of anything. He just got me off and he doesn't even know it anyway. That Mark Garagos guy is amazing. Got great lawyers. They got the charges dropped, but he still hate crime himself. I can't figure it out. And there's nowhere you, you, any website you go to, any news story, 
you can't find like a real like it, nobody see how confused I am talking about it. I I can't even spit out the words. I'm just trying to figure out. So he did it, but he didn't do it. And then other people are saying that well, there still could be mail fraud because he sent himself some, you know, hate mail saying that he was going to kill himself. Uh, so there's still a federal charge that he could get, but who knows now. And then some people are like cheering on the fact that he's innocent, but he's not innocent. So he, it's weird. I just can't figure it out. All I know is if you have the right lawyers and you do anything wrong, holy shit, you'll be fine. Because great lawyers got OJ. OJ got away with murder because of great lawyers. Michael Jackson, MJ, got away with touching kids because great lawyers. Justice Mulsett got away with hate crime in himself because great lawyers. But it still doesn't make him innocent. Because that, all right, I think I finally figured out how to say it. Probably not. Probably not, but I'm going to try. So we all know that he did it because nobody has come out and said, hey, he didn't actually do it. He got for real hate crime. Nobody said that because, oh, that's right. All kinds of evidence that he did it to himself. But he's clear to the charges. Why? I can't figure it out. And then no news story can tell you either. So it's just been this whole day has just been very confusing to me because I'm like, so what, what's the final verdict then? Do we have to say he's innocent, but we know he did it? I mean, I guess that's what happened with OJ. We're like, OJ definitely killed people, but he didn't go to jail for it. Because the glove didn't fit, must have quit. So now we got to pretend like he's innocent, but don't want to be alone in the room with him. Don't want to be alone in a room with OJ if he thinks you've been looking at his chick. Heads might roll. But I can't say he's guilty because technically he's innocent. So I guess that's what's going on now. OJ did get locked up later in jail now. Good, probably should be because murdered two people. And you should go to jail for that. All I'm saying though is if you have money and lawyers, man, you could pretty much get away with anything. I mean, even, uh, who was that, Al Capone? The only way they were able to take him down for murder is so tax evasion. So... Just don't mess with the government's money and you'll be fine. Like you could kill people all you want. You can hate crime yourself all you want. But as soon as you start trying to steal some money, you are going down. So that's been going on today. And oh yeah, I started this off by saying, hey neighbor, don't want your cookies. And that's the truth. Why do I say that? Well, because the other day, so... Hot ass wife Alex Fresh and I just moved into a new place and we're getting everything situated. And she was leaving to go somewhere. And I was I was out there in the garage with her and I started to walk inside. And then I saw a car pull up. And this lady gets out and starts walking up to my wife. And I was like, huh. Wonder what that's about. It's an elderly lady. I'm not going to go intervene just yet. I think my wife, who works out a lot and is pretty strong and athletic, could beat up that old lady if she needs to. I'm just going to observe for a second. So I'm standing in the window watching my wife, Alex, speak to this lady who's got like three other kids running around. And I'm like, oh... Oh, that's like a neighbor who wants to talk. Little does she know, my wife doesn't want to talk to her. Not because we're rude, but just kind of introverts. And also, 
I don't really, I don't really feel the need to know my neighbors. Sorry if you're one of my neighbors. You're not because there's nobody really around us right now, except for this lady who drove from like five houses away, but not even five houses, across the street, at least five houses away. Some must have seen us outside and was like, here's my opportunity. Kids, get in the goddamn car. Hey, hi, my name's Janice. Don't know if her name was Janice. Probably Janice. Sounds like a Janice thing to do. So she drives all the way across the street just to introduce herself because she's noticed that some people have moved into this house and wait a second, I don't know them. I must figure it out. No, sorry, Sherlock. Sorry, Inspector Clouseau. You don't need to figure it out. People move into houses all the time in neighborhoods. You don't have to know everybody in your neighborhood. You shouldn't be a busybody. Mind your own GD business. That's kind of the way I feel. Uh, also, who knows what your neighbor... If my neighbor just ignores me, that's great. Because people scare me in general. And I don't know what you're doing in your house. And I don't want to be an accessory to anything. So just, you stay on your side of the property line. I'll stay on my side of the property line. And don't you dare ask me to get together on a Saturday to do some homebrew in your garage. Not interested, hipster. Not interested. Go make an IPA with someone else. I know I got facial hair, but it's not like long, bushy facial hair that I'm really proud of growing because those are the guys that make IPAs in their garage. Not interested. I got my friends. I got my group of people I like to be around. Don't need any new ones, especially ones that like to make IPA on Saturday afternoon. So she comes over and I'm like, oh no, she's in one of those situations that she doesn't want to be in. And being the good supportive husband that I am, I'm watch through the window and laugh because I know what's going on. So the lady introduces herself and says, hey, I'm your neighbor. Oh, by the way, not really. You're not really a neighbor. You're from across the street and multiple houses down. I know I sound like a jerk right now. I might be down with knowing my direct neighbors. Why? Because if house is on fire, do me a favesy, call the fire department. Homebrew, not interested. But if your homebrew machine blows up in your garage, I'll call the cops for you. So the ones right next door, yeah, casually. But I, I don't, I just don't feel this need to like hang out with all my neighbors like some people do. But you're not even a neighbor. If it's across the street, boom, 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 five houses down, you're not a neighbor at this point. Now you're just a nosy person who sees people moving into a house and because you can't handle not knowing everything that's going on around you, you got to stop and introduce yourself. And here's the part that I was talking about. She goes, well, well, I wasn't there because I was hiding inside like a very supportive husband. I was hiding inside, sending my wife text messages going, who's that? LOL. I already knew who it was. Just wanted to see her response. So I guess she told Alex. Like, oh, well, we were going to make some cookies and bring them over to you, but we didn't have time. Why didn't you have time? Because you weren't prepared. Because you've been sticking your head out your door probably every half an hour that you're home, hoping to spot a body walking around in the garage so you can muster your kids in the car and hightail it over here five houses away and across the street so you can say hi. Hi. And maybe peek inside and see what kind of furniture we got so you can judge us or something. Not paranoid. Not paranoid. Maybe a little bit paranoid. So she goes, we, we, we were going to make you some cookies, but we didn't, didn't have time to make you some cookies. No. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. No. Don't want your cookies. Don't want your cookies because don't really want to know you that bad. Don't want your cookies because you're not actually a neighbor. You're a weirdo from across the street and five houses down. Don't want your cookies because haven't seen your kitchen. Probably one of the biggest pieces of that puzzle. I don't want your cookies because I haven't seen where they were prepared. It's the same reason that I 
will not eat potluck food anywhere because I know how my kitchen looks. Oh, looked before I got married. Now my kitchen is very clean, although we don't cook in it very much, but my kitchen is spotless because my wife cleans the whole entire damn house and I don't help out as much as I should. Feel bad about that. Feel very bad about that. Would like to help out more. Going to try to help out more. Probably going to fail. Probably going to feel bad about that some more, but our kitchen is very clean now. But when I was a single dude, holy crap, don't eat anything that I made if I bring it to a potluck. Why? Because filthy kitchen, dishes probably weren't washed well enough. If they were washed at all, you might get E. coli, end up pooping yourself for a week. I don't trust anybody's kitchen, so I don't want your cookies, and I don't want to know you. And then that got me thinking about some other things as far as traditions go. Like, hey, it's not the 50s, lady. This isn't, I don't know. I know that people are going to disagree with me here when I'm talking about the whole neighborly thing, right? We should all just, we should know all our neighbors and we should all be friends. Not really, because guess what? Some of my neighbors are going to be dicks and I don't want to know it. I'm probably the dick and I don't want to be a dick to them. Let's just go about our lives and realize, hey, we got houses next to each other. That's it. Do we really need to bring feelings into this? We got houses and property lines. Let's leave the feelings out of it. I'll, I'll reserve my feelings for the people I want to feel stuff with. Thank you very much. Don't you dare invite me over for homebrew. Don't. Not interested in making an IPA, Chad. I'm not interested. Second so thing, though, like, it's not the 50s and this whole sense of everybody has to know everybody and people bringing over cookies and going caroling on Christmas. If you show up at my door caroling, guess what? You're going to ring the doorbell and I'm going to have heard you coming because there's going to be the murmur of singing. And guess what's going to happen? I'm going to click off the outdoor light right in your face, right in your face as you're caroling. You're going to stand up at the door. You're going to ring the doorbell. You're going to go, oh, silent night, click. And then you're going to stand there in the darkness and go, damn. That is a person who's not interested in homebrewing on a Saturday. It's just kind of an outdated thing for me, especially bringing over cookies and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need that in my life. And I don't understand why certain people do. And then the 13-year-old, Bella, was talking the other day about school and how she has a cooking class, which is fine because it's probably good to learn to cook. But then she kept going into how her teacher was telling them that when you do dinners at home, they should be around a table. They should last two hours. Who has two hours for dinner? You have two hours for dinner? No. Why is McDonald's so successful? Because most p p people, p people, p people, p people, p people, I'm stuck right there, but I got, I got through it. Most people don't have two hours for dinner. But she was saying, and I was like, she said, what? Dinner should take two hours? Yeah, she said dinner should be two hours, everybody around the table. And so you can spend some quality time with each other. Hi, there's other way to spend quality time. I don't want to chew my food for two hours. And sit there with, well, remember, I was talking about Red Robin last week. There's no screen. So I got a six-year-old who I'm going to be like, for two hours, being like, just eat it, man. Just sit in the chair. Just eat. Just sit. Would you just sit in the chair and eat? You, I know you don't want to eat, but trust me, you're not going to leave the table without eating. So just finish it and we'll be done and we can do other things. There are, there are other ways to spend quality time. That's another old school etiquette thing is every family should be around the dinner table and we should have all dressed for dinner. Father should have his tie on. Mother should have her 
dress on, her hair perfectly done. The children should be sitting there with their hands in their lap, lap with perfect posture, and we should all ask each other about our days. No, there's other ways to spend quality time. Now, we could all get around the TV and plug the phone into it or whatever device and watch some YouTube videos together and laugh. Just laugh at kittens on YouTube. Technology is amazing. People that believe in saying hi to your neighbor seven miles away, not your neighbor, they always think technology is terrible because of things like that. But you can still bond with technology in certain ways. Like, hey, check out this funny ass video of a dude falling down some stairs. What do you guys think about that? Pretty hilarious? Yeah. Very hilarious. I'm glad we did that. I appreciate your sense of humor. I appreciate that you could laugh at that. I hope you appreciated that I could laugh at that. We're a happy family. We didn't need forks and knives and steak to do that, did we? No. All we needed was a solid Wi-Fi connection or maybe 3G. So that's another outdated tradition. And I just don't really understand why we hang on to so many traditions in the world like why can't we evolve i'm not saying don't have your own fun things that you do with your own family but why try to tell everybody else how to be a good neighbor or how to be a good person or how to have the right dinner maybe just maybe you ever think that some families are actually closer when they eat dinner around the couch in front of the TV, maybe that's a great memory. Maybe they love watching NCIS. I don't. Don't really like the show, but there are some people that do. You know what? I don't want to take that away from them by being like, you got to have three forks and fucking two knives and a jelly spoon and whatever else. And you have to sit there in silence. And every once in a while, someone's going to be like, how was your day, Jim? I'm gay now, dad. What? Not in my house. You know, that kind of interaction. That's the kind of interaction that I feel like those people would have because they're stuck in the 50s. But maybe that maybe that is the way that family enjoys having dinner and not around a table for two hours acting pretentious. And maybe some people like sitting around a table for two hours acting pretentious. And that's how they have a good time. If you do, it's not me. Sorry about that. Also don't really like sitting on the couch watching NCIS. I like doing other things. But you get what I'm saying. Why is that the right way to do it? Why haven't we evolved enough as a human race to go, hey, I like to sit around the table for two hours with my family and have like weird forced interactions. That's cool. That's what I like to do. You like to have dinner in your backyard in a trough like a pig. You put slop in a bucket and your whole family eats out of the trough like a family of pigs. That's a weird thing to do, Jim. But you know what, Jim? More power to you. You enjoy that. I'm not coming to your house for dinner, though. Got it? Sweet. Because Jim probably doesn't want to go to his house for dinner either, because that sounds really boring to a guy who eats out of a slop bucket. Trust me, I've known a few. Why? Why, why is there a right way and a wrong way to do simple things like that? And why do people who feel like their way is right feel the need? My voice just cracked. Feel the need to control the people who don't, you know? And there's other things too, like just these traditions that we have that I just, I, I struggle with a lot. I, I try to figure out why people do things. Like when holidays come around, uh, Easter, for example, Easter is a very religious holiday. And there's a lot of people who never go to church ever, never, ever, 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 ever go to church. Didn't even grow up religious on Easter Sunday though. They're in church acting like they understand what it's all about. That is so weird to me. Sleep in, sleep in, and then have an Easter egg hunt and just make it about the candy. Why do you have to go to church just because people have done that for a long time? Enjoy the holiday the way you want to enjoy it. 
and make it about a bunny and eggs and buying candy. But no, people have to go to church on Christmas and Easter and everything else when they've never been to church before. That's not fun, and they're not having fun doing it either. Because you hear them go like, oh, ugh, I gotta wake up early on Sunday and go to church because it's Easter Sunday. Guess what? Don't. Pretty simple. It's 2019. Nobody's going to flog you for not going to church. It's your one, the first year that I decided not to go to my family's house. Don't talk to my family anymore. If you didn't know that, don't talk to them. One of the best decisions I ever made, probably the best decision I ever made. But the first year that I decided not to go to their house for Thanksgiving, it was such a tough thing to do because I'm like, well, I got all this pressure from them, of course, and then from society, of course, because you got to be around your family, even if being around your family makes you miserable. But they're your family, so you got to go see them. And then the first year I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go there for Thanksgiving. I'm going to stay home and find somewhere that has a burger. And I sat on the couch by myself and I ate a burger on Thanksgiving with the biggest smile you have ever seen in your life because for once I wasn't sitting there in agony eating some turkey around people who create a reaction in me that makes me just want to jump off a building. And people would ask me about that. That must have been so sad. And I was like, no, it was great. Or here's the really telling thing about that. I would tell people, they go, what'd you do for Thanksgiving? I was like, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I separated the word like that to absolutely nothing. And the response shocked me because at first I thought it was going to be, oh, oh, mm, I'm so sad. It hurts my insides. I feel sad for you. No, almost every single person that I talked to, you know what they said? Oh my God, that sounds amazing. Yeah, pretty much every person that I told I decide, that year that I decided not to go to their house for Thanksgiving, pretty much everybody orgasmed when I told them. I was like, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't do anything. I decided to stay home, skip all the stress, and I ate a burger by myself. And their reaction was just like, thank you for that. Need new pants now. Because I gave them an orgasm because they could empathize with me and feel how amazing that felt to sit there and not have to give to societal pressure and make myself miserable for no reason at all. Instead, I'm going to stay home, eat a burger, and climax everywhere. I probably masturbated because I was alone. And sometimes you do that when you're alone. I don't know, though. The highlight for me was the burger. But I could have I could have masturbated that Thanksgiving if I wanted to. I don't know if I did. I don't keep a log of it, if you're wondering. I'm not going to go back to my files. I don't have a masturbatory file. Should start keeping one, though, so that I can check back and be like, yeah, I did it that day. So I'm not sure if your question is that I masturbate that Thanksgiving. I'm not sure. That's very, very, very nosy of you. But good question. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I just ate a burger. But why do we make ourselves miserable? Why do we do things we don't want to do just because society tells us that we should or people have been doing it for a long time? Best man... At wedding, horrible sentence structure there. But having the best man at a wedding, I, my wife and I got married, which is usually what happens when you say my wife and I, you probably have gotten married, which you could probably say is another tradition that we didn't need to do. And I think the two of us, if we had a conversation about it, said, hey, we could probably just sign some legal documents that say that, you know, like we're obligated to each other. We might have done that but wanted to get married. Not because of the societal pressure, 
cuz love my wife thought it would be really dope to see her in a wedding dress and go through all that but our wedding was pretty unconventional didn't have a best man didn't have any bridal parties any of that kind of stuff uh, obviously didn't do it in the church obviously um you know it wasn't super traditional but we made it we made it our way and i know there's a lot of people that do the same thing. They go to churches, they do all this stuff when really you, you might not even be religious. So why get married in a church? Oh yeah. Cause society told you you should, or you got some parents or you got some family members who would be highly offended. If you didn't, you know what? Offend them, challenge them a little bit, teach them to bend, teach them to let other people do their shit, teach them to let other people do them. So they're not pressuring their family members into getting married in a church if they don't want to. So that they're not judging the guy that wants to eat food out of a slop bowl while they're sitting around the table miserable. Teach those people to shut it and let you do you. That's all I'm saying. But I didn't have a best man. And just because I didn't want to. I didn't, I didn't want to have to go through that whole process of like choosing people, blah, blah, blah. Also, you know, it's just, it's just a lot to coordinate. And I'm not very organized. I probably would have waited until the night before to be like, oh, shit. I got no party to match her party. She's got seven gals. I need seven guys. So we just didn't do it. But even things like the best man at a wedding, that tradition, do you know where that tradition started? Hopefully you don't, because I'm going to tell you, and I want it to be like, oh, wow, that's cool. If you do, hang out for a second. You already know. But the best man at a wedding started literally because back when weddings were set up, with dowries and women were basically property, which by the way, that's the other thing, asking for a woman's hand in marriage. No, no, not gonna do that because she makes her own decisions. Sorry if that hurts your feelings, Pa, but your daughter, when she hit 18, is now a person. Before that was still a person, but a person that you could make decisions for. But once she was 18, person who makes decisions for herself not your choice who she marries. Hopefully she makes a good choice. Hopefully you parented right so that she can make a good choice, not asking you. But the best man started back when people were property. Well, women were property. And there was a deal between the dad and the groom, usually a financial thing or like some cows like, hey, hey, I'll give you eight cows if I can marry your daughter. And he's like, eight cows, my daughter's worth nine cows and then they're like well your daughter is going on 23 now she's getting up there i'm now lowering it to six cows take the deal don't be an idiot you're right she's old here you go so the best man though was actually there not because he was the dude's best bud but because he was the best like swordsman that the guy knew not because they were homies, not because he's the one who set up the strippers for the bachelor party, but because he was really good with a blade. So if the dad was pissed about the deal and tried to take out the groom before they were officially married, this guy could fucking chop the dad's, dad's, the dad's, that works, the dead dad's head off. He would chop first, then the dad would die. So it'd be dad, dead, not dead, dad first. But you know what I mean? He was there to make sure he was a bodyguard, basically, to make sure that if the deal went bad, he would protect it. So he'd be like slicing dudes up and they'd be like, hurry up, man. We got to get married real quick. Uh, now she's my property. You get out of here with your four cows. Woo, I won. Got the best man. He's got a big sword. Outdated tradition. And some people might like that tradition. I mean, it is cool to be like, you know, you're my best friend. Also, also, you're not my best friend because I want a friend who knows how to wield a sword like that. I don't feel protected around you anymore, Jeff. I just don't because you don't know how to use a sword correctly. If there were four marauders coming at me, I'm dead and you're dead. I want a best friend who can protect us both with a big blade. 
new conversation I need to have with my friends, obviously. I need to go through each one of them and find out who's good with a sword and who isn't so I can keep them closer to me. But it's an outdated thing. and some I mean, it's cool to say, hey, uh, we're good friends and I would like you to stand next to me while I make a big decision. But that's just another instance of a tradition that people do that you don't need to do because it started with something that is way outdated, kind of like bringing cookies to your neighbor when they haven't seen your kitchen. Kind of like sitting around a dinner table for two hours having awkward conversations because you're forced to do it. You're not actually having fun together. Instead, cut that dinner to 45 minutes and then go do something that you guys like to do together. Don't let some cooking teacher tell you that that's the right way to do things because she's 80 and about to retire. And that's how she did it when she was a kid. And look how she turned out angry and teaching a cooking class. By the way, why is every single teacher who teaches like a cooking class or PE or uh, pottery, any of those kind of classes, like in junior high school and high school, those teachers are always so old. You know why? Because they're about to retire because they're done. The PE teachers and everybody else are never the young ones. They're always the super old ones who are just over it all. They're just they're like, they ask them before the school, you're like, hey, we know that you usually teach English. You want to do that again? And they're just like, no. I don't, if I can't do another goddamn English class, I got to, I'm going to, I got to do PE. I can just sit down and give these goddamn kids a ball to kick around. Because I am so tired and beaten down from having to teach these assholes for 30 years. Just please, God, let me teach PE. Please, just, just let me teach cooking so I can do something that I kind of like to do because I like to cook. Just let me teach cooking so that I don't have to have a kid throw another pencil at me when my back is turned. I just want to teach him how to cook a little bit and also teach them the proper etiquette at a table that is complete bullshit because you shouldn't have to worry about etiquette anymore. Just be yourself and not try to impress everybody with your etiquette. Oh, guess what? Guess what, everybody? If I'm eating with you, my elbows are going firmly on the table. Firmly. I'm putting my elbows all over that table. I might put my elbows all over your food if I want to. Because I think table manners, unless you're chewing with your mouth open and spitting on people, are stupid. I don't care about your posture. You do your posture the way you want to do your posture. You keep your arms on your side of the table, please, unless you're Mahadev's wife wanting to hold my hand from across the table. But if you're not, don't touch me and we'll be good because I'm not in charge of your actions. If you want to sit sloppy and have a slouchy back and look like the hunchback of Notre Dame when you're 90, go for it. Go for it. Doesn't affect my back. Doesn't affect my back because my posture is decent. Not the best, but not the worst. Traditions just bother me. They just bother me because most of them are old and outdated. And most of them come from a place where we don't even realize where they came from. Like the best man thing. You got to be able to use a sword to stand next to someone. That's why we keep doing it. I just want people to be individuals and to just do their shit. Whatever it is, just do you unless you're like OJ Simpson and you're murdering people. Don't do that. Unless you're like Justice Smollett, hate crime in yourself should be held accountable. But if Justice Smollett wants to have dinner for two hours, 
go ahead and do that. Just don't hate crime yourself and shut down the city of Chicago and get the whole nation and world in an uproar, please. Okay? Now you're infringing on my time. I'm letting you do your time. Now you're infringing on my time because I've got to spend all goddamn day looking at stories of Jesse Smollett. First of all, figuring out how to say his name a while back, but now trying to figure out if if he's clear to the charges, is he still guilty? Now you've taken up my day because you were a prick. Just do you. I'll do me. Don't hate crime yourself and make me have to worry about you. Does that make sense? I hope that makes some sort of sense. That was the Jubal Show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you rate and review. Remember, rate, review, rate, and review, please. Also, make sure you check out the podcast that I do with my hot ass wife, Alex Fresh. Don't come talk to her and try to give her cookies because, hi, neighbor, don't want your cookies. No, thank you very much. No, thank you very much. And uh, exclusive content on my Patreon. Uh, patreon.com slash jubal fresh uh i got some shows coming up um if you haven't checked out the i'm looking at my phone right now so give me a second i'm looking at my website by the way website is last name fresh.com if you didn't know that go check that out uh, all the links to podcasts are on there the links to my tour is on there there's also some merchandise that you can buy and things like that um so go check that out if you get a chance. But I'm looking at my phone. Why? Because very unorganized. And I have no clue where I'm at coming up. And I should probably know that because I don't want to get a call going, Hey, this is XXX Comedy Club. By the way, I haven't played a comedy club called XXX Comedy Club. Sounds kind of dicey. But this is so and so comedy club. Uh, where are you? I don't want to do that, and something's going on with my phone and the website right now. So, uh, look at my calendar. My calendar is always super outdated, but I'm gonna give it a shot, and I'm gonna tell you that I have a, a sleep test coming up in a few weeks. You're probably not interested in that, though. Um, Good Friday, Passover, Easter Sunday is coming up. Uh, don't go to church if you're not religious. Try that on for size. See how it feels. Oh, oh okay. Here we go. Um, May 9th through the 11th, I'll be at the Skyline Comedy Club in Appleton, Wisconsin. So you can check that out. Um, and May 30th and 31st and probably through the weekend, I'll be at Zany's in Chicago. Just go to UglyTickets.com or LastNameFresh.com to get it. That was an incredibly long explanation of where I'll be at. The sleep test, I'll let you know how it goes. Other than that, thank you very much, and we'll see you next week on the Jubal Show, where I will probably be here and not some other Jubal. Can't promise it, though, because I've got some interviews lined up. Don't know when they're scheduled, but I'll get them scheduled, and I'll interview them, and most likely I'll say no. No. I'm going to keep doing the Jubal Show. Rate review. Rate and review. Positive review. Don't be a dick unless you want to be a dick. You do you. Rate review. Positive review, please. We'll see you later.